I'm Rick Long, the General Manager of PEI, and I'd like to welcome you to this replay of a live webinar that PEI presented in September of 2016 to introduce and explain our new pre-employment screening skills assessment test. Before jumping into the substance of the presentation, let me briefly set the stage for what you're going to hear today. For quite a while now, as PEI staff has been traveling around the country visiting our members, one topic has been consistently coming up over and over again. Members, both large and small, I might add, keep telling us about the shortage of qualified service technicians. The problem plays out, it seems, in three different ways. One is just finding new technicians, another is qualifying them, and the third is training them. To help address this situation, PEI's Board of Directors asked us as a staff to create three new member services. You can find all of these, by the way, at uh, PEI.org slash tech. That's PEI.org slash tech. First up was a series of three short videos that you can use to help your recruitment effort of new candidates. Second was a training course that teaches the basics that new service technicians should master during the first few months of their employment. And the skills assessment test that you're going to hear about today completes the triangle. You all know that judging the qualifications of potential new hires is no easy task. As PEI looked at how we could best create this testing product, we knew that we needed to partner with a company with real expertise in developing pre-employment screening tools. And I have to say that we couldn't be happier to be working with California-based PSI services on this project. They have been successfully developing and administering tests like this one in a wide range of industries for a long, long time. And they've also just been a pleasure to work with. I'm sure that those of you who choose to participate in this program will find that as well. Today's presenter is Alicia Allegrini, who is Director of Client Services for PSI Services. Alicia is going to tell you more about their company. First of all, walk through how the new test works and give you some ideas on how you can use it in your recruitment and qualifying efforts. The complete presentation takes just over one hour. As a reminder, those of you who are listening to the replay will not be able to submit questions, as was the case with the live broadcast, so you can ignore those parts where Alicia asks you to, to uh, type in any sort of questions. We'll now begin the replay with Alicia Allegrini. Without further ado, just a quick agenda so you all know what we're going to be doing today. I've got some quick introductions just so you can learn some of the names and people on my who you might be working with as we roll this out at each of your uh, locations. And then also um, I'll do that quick overview of who PSI is and thanks to Rick for that quick introduction there. We'll also go through kind of the history of how we got to where we are today. What, what processes did PSI do in order to help validate the tests that have been chosen for the service technician role and uh, how those recommendations came about because it is a rigorous process. We do take it very seriously. It's one of the things that we pride ourselves on at PSI. And uh, it's always good to give you guys the backstory as well so you know what it took to kind of come to where we are today. And then um, with our remaining time, I'd like to show you just a, a quick overview of our, our platform, our demonstrations. I'll show you both what I would call the client side of things where you and your authorized users at your locations would be able to go in and order inventory for this account, generate test keys for your candidates, and subsequently pull reports. And then I'll also show you just the intro kind of candidate experience, very high level. Um, for those of you that are going to be signing up use, uh, utilizing this system in the future, we've got some forms that will be um, communicated out to you through the team. We've um, been working really closely with a number of team members to help get things going, including Rex and Whitney. So um, we'll send that information post-meeting. And then, of course, um, kind of just talk about next steps together. So we should be able to stay on track. We might even finish early today for Friday, but we'll see how it goes and uh, take it from there. There might be a slight delay um, between the PowerPoint today, so I apologize for that. So just some quick introductions. My name is Alicia Allegrini. I'm Director of Client Services here at PSI. Been with the company about 11 years. My background is in industrial organizational psychology. And then um, some names that you may see over the course of time working with us. Uh, we've got Beth White. She's our manager of the TA group. Jennifer Reed is one of our supervisors, and then Jay Baker is one of our client consultants. Uh, we're all here to service you as an organization, as a affiliates, and um, 
want to make sure that you're getting the best out of your customer service. So um, as you roll out this process at your locations, we'll be your, your primary contacts, and certainly we'll be communicating effectively with you as we um, set up your sub-accounts, as we call them, for the PEI program. So some quick overviews of who PSI is. Um, Rick alluded to this. We've been in business since 1946, so we've been around the block a few times. Uh, we, we give about 2.5 million tests annually, and we have just over 2,500 clients. Um, we're about a size of 1,500 employees right now, and we are national and also uh, expanding into international now, so uh, pretty str a pretty strong presence there. We're big on um, defensibility, and I kind of alluded to that with our validation efforts that we did even leading into this project. It's our it's our most important, and we, we take it very seriously when it comes to integrity and success of the, uh, the various tools that we have our clients use. We have never been successfully challenged in um, litigation settings when the tests have been used appropriately and, and, and correctly, and um, we're very proud of that. So we're excited to work with the PEI group and also continue that tradition with all of you. Um, and then finally, we're easy to implement, easy to use. You'll, you'll notice as we do the demonstration today, the system is very intuitive, it's very user friendly, there's not uh, a lot of confusion or bells and whistles that will limit uh, an individual from being able to use the platform. So um, you'll see that as we go through the uh, presentation today. So just a little bit of background for everybody on, on what project steps we took, how we got to where we are today. Um, this has been a uh, a process that started essentially back in December of last year, and, and that, that started with what we call a kickoff meeting. Um, basically, the key stakeholders from both PEI and PSI got together, talked about what the initiatives were, what the needs were culturally from your side of things, get, getting that feedback from REC and the team, determining how we were going to proceed forward to make sure that you're getting the best and most qualified service technicians within your various locations. And so um, with that, we then were given a series of documentations, job descriptions, training materials, kind of like the ins and outs of what it takes to be a, a solid service technician. And um, that information was sent over from PEI to PSI. And we have a, a team of IO psychologists and consultants who then reviewed that information looking for what we call knowledge, skills, and abilities and other, other traits. So what, again, are the main knowledge, skills, and abilities that are going to make this person be successful on the job Get, um, come to work every day, be dependable, reliable, and conscientious when they're, they're doing their job day in and day out. From that point, we then conducted what are called job observations and focus group meetings. So um, job observations occurred via what we call ride-alongs with experienced service technicians. So literally, we had staff that would go out and, and ride in and be with service technicians um, and then we also, in addition to that, held what are called subject matter expert focus groups. Uh, these are usually clustered individuals between six and eight participants at a time who are brought into a room really to tell us more about the qualitative elements of the job. When a person starts day one, what do they need to know? When they're on the job for the next six months, what do they need to know? And then long term, what does it take to be successful in that role um, to continue on with the organization, and um, those are those are quite helpful. The characteristics that they they bring out, the the tasks that may not be covered in a job description, it really gives our our psychologists an opportunity to really dig into what a day in the life of a service technician. So we can hear the pain points, the nuances, the different elements that they may encounter day in and day out to be successful. And then from that point, we went ahead and did what we call a job analysis survey and linkage survey. So again, we had um, a selective group of individuals that were provided to us from PEI um, that then were given a survey online link webinar um, that they collected quantitative data for that service technician role. Um, and so not only are we getting that qualitative element that I just talked about with the ride-alongs and the interviews and the subject matter experts, but also this quantitative component that lets us see um, how who took the survey is assessing those knowledge, skills, and abilities as it relates specifically to the service technician. And so we collect all that information and then we do what's called a link up st study. Um, essentially what that means is we take all that great data and we run a bunch of analysis on it and then from that we de determine, okay, how is this, this role relevant or similar to all of our PSI historical data that we have for similar job families and groups and making sure that it's statistically sound to say, yes, in fact, 
all the data that PSI has for XYZ job family is comparable and comparable to the information we've learned specifically about PEIs, service technician role, so that we can then use that information and those data points to then what we call link to our historical data set. Um, and it's a really great way for us to stay compliant from an EEOC um, auditing perspective. Um, we all, all the things that are required when you think about being audited potentially from an outside service, it allows you to have a really great document, documented technical report that sits on your shelf, virtually collects dust, but it, it, it protects you as an organization to say, not only did we use an off-the-shelf tool that was already validated, but we took the due diligence to make sure that it was done specifically for the service technician role within PEI and its affiliated groups. So um, it's a great step. We always encourage our clients to do it. We're grateful PEI did it. And, um, and what you're seeing today as far as the final solution is all of those efforts from both sides of the house coming together, helping us make it successful. So if you or anyone that you know was a part of that, we appreciate it. We thank you for your participation. It is an important element for us as we, as we go through and look at the database and determine um, the best solution for you. And then finally, we did a summary of all of that. We, we made assessment recommendations. That was presented to a key stakeholder group within the PEI organization. Kind of talked about the, the pros and cons of each of the different assessments that PSI was recommending, how much time the candidate was going to be asked to sit and take an assessment, because we recognize that time is of the essence. You want a qualified person, but you also don't want them sitting in front of a computer for multiple hours. Um, and you wanted something that's going to be tried and true. So, with that, we came up with final battery decisions. Um, a battery is defined as individual tests combined together. And then we implemented that, and then we had documentation. So um, a, lot of, a lot of great things have happened over the course of the last seven or eight months. And we're excited to have you all on the account today. Um, the great thing about it is basically for all of you on the call today, if you want to switch tomorrow or uh, next week, we just need those forms. And it takes us a couple of days to complete it. and then get your team trained for a 45 minute training and you're off and running. So we're pretty much at the tail end of this project and um, happy to have you all on today. All right, so here's where we ended up. It's a very wordy slide, but I just wanted to give you all kind of like the nuts and bolts of the various assessments that were determined and uh, give you some of the background on, on what they measure. So um, you'll see in the left hand column, we have different acronyms under the test column. And then the descriptions are there, so you can kind of dive in a little bit further to what is it that we're actually assessing with these various tools, how many items are, are, are on each of the different assessments, the time limit permitted for each of them, what are the KSAOs or those knowledge, skills, and abilities that I alluded to earlier that are being measured by these tools. So again, um, taking all that validation work into consideration, this is the final summary of tests that the candidates will be given. Um, when they're given a test key from our platform and they sit down to take this, the assessment. So um, not to go into too much detail, but I would like to go through them just so that everybody gets a feel for the types of assessments that candidates will be asked to um, complete. The top one is a mechanical principles test. That's going to be measuring your physical and mechanical concepts, um, primarily used in industrial and mechanical type jobs. This is a uh, 15 to 20 minute time period, and um, we're looking at the ability to, to do written directions, active learning skills, um, basic mechanical principles, you know, uh, the, the things that are going to be required if they're in kind of an, an environment where they need to be able to look at uh, different technologies or, or systems to understand what's happening from a reasoning perspective and be successful in diagnosing an issue or problem. Um, the, next, the next selection tool was a verbal comprehension assessment looking at um, ability to understand kind of written words, ideas, and, and associated. Um, really important, especially if you're having them follow procedural things, making sure that they're documenting things when they come and go from various um, calls or information. You want this person to be able to really be eloquent and, and understand what exactly they're, they're working with as far as the requirements of the organization as well, and then also documentation long term. The, th the third tool that you'll see there is numerical ability. Um, this is getting at your basic um, math skills, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Uh, I, a lot of times people say, well, why do they need to know this? You know, it's not that important. But when you think about some of the different measurements they may need, be, need, need to be doing on the job, it's important to have this basic fundamental knowledge of, of numerical ability in order to be successful in that role and have those analytical skills um, 
So again, it's it may sound silly to say, but it is a very important element, especially when we looked at the database of information that was presented to us. The, ne the next one's visual pursuit. Um, recognizing that they may be looking at um, a way to kind of trace information, uh, making sure that like network resembling a schematic diagram is what they're displayed on the screen. So making sure that they have like that visual acuity to, to be able to see where a problem is um, and determine like complex problems that might be occurring between systems, um, different elements within the platform. And then finally, um, from a cognitive perspective, these are all cognitive tests that we're talking about, there's a verbal reasoning component to it. So again, getting at that that reasoning skill, um, there's also a comprehension of verbal comprehension within this, but also um, having the analytical capabilities to assess what's going on and understand holistically, long term, um, what might be causing the root problem and, and servicing accordingly. So as you can see here, just in those cognitive elements, none of these tests are over, I mean, it's a five minute, 10 minute, five minute, five minute, and they're what we call speeded tests. So some people may be looking at the same five minutes for 30 questions or 10 minutes for 75. Know that the system is intended to be uh, a speeded element, meaning the candidates are encouraged to work quickly and accurately um, in order to kind of get through the assessment. Um, we don't encourage them on these tests to kind of just randomly guess. We want them to work quickly and then also if they don't know the answer, they can certainly skip it. But we also don't expect them to answer 75 questions in 10 minutes. So when they read the directions and they see the online information, that's explicitly outlined to them. But I just want to mention it to all of you today. Um, we don't expect people to be able to answer all these. They're intended to be speeded with purpose. Um, again, very high validity as it relates to these different tests. Um, and also saves your candidates time recognizing that this is one piece of the puzzle as they're coming through the hiring process. And then the last element of the assessment, we talked about the cognitive, you know, the can do just now. The the work view six is the the will do. So is this person going to be a, a conscientious individual? Are they going to be trustworthy? Are they going to um, manage the work pressures of their day-to-day -day schedules? Do they get along well with their coworkers, with the clients, with the um, their managers, drug and alcohol avoidance, obviously an important element. Are they going to be uh, dependable on the job? And then, of course, uh, usually in these instances, safety orientation is of, of a, a very high level is important um, given the, the nature of their business. And so safety orientation is another thing that we're measuring here within this tool. So the great thing about the battery, the chosen test that you're seeing today, is you're getting that great blend of cognitive with the, the uh, what we call work attitude, which is the kind of the will-do element. So um, while this last test takes a little bit longer, there's no right or wrong answer. The candidates are given kind of a, a scenario or a question, and then based upon that, they're asked to kind of strongly agree, strongly disagree, or somewhere in the middle. Um, and then all of that gets combined together into an overall scoring algorithm. Okay. And so um, what I wanted to do next and with our, our time today is I did want to take you all through a little bit of a demonstration. Um, I was thinking that I would show you not only the client account, which is showing you where you can go in and order your online inventory for this new battery that we just alluded to. You can also do what we call generate test keys for the candidates who are going to be testing for the various assessment. And then finally being able to pull those reports. Um, there won't be any reports in the demonstration I do today, mainly because it's a demo account, but I wanted you to see how we broke down the various um, what we call score bands for the assessments. And, and each of you, as you test your candidates, are going to see these score bands on your score report itself. Um, so you can see individuals who score holistically on the overall account um, battery at the 75th percentile or above are going to be your highly recommended group. And then those who are between the 50th and 74th percentile are going to be recommended. And then those are the 25th to 49th are recommended with caution. And then finally, your, your lower than 25th percentile is not recommended. So um, again, these, these cut scores were determined based upon conversations with the PEI stakeholders. We want to be um, selective in using this tool to kind of lower out your lower 25th percentile as a knockout but also recognize that there may be a variation of skill sets in between there. Um, oftentimes I see the clients start from the top and work their way down, so they'll kind of 
look at their most highly recommended candidates first and try and push them through the next steps. And then if, if they kind of fall out accordingly, then they'll go to their recommended group. Um, and then sometimes, again, depending on your applicant pool, they'll need to tap into that recommended with caution group. Um, something I do want to make sure I point out here is you'll notice that I'm, I'm referencing percentiles, not percentages. So it's not how many did they get right versus how many did they get wrong on a, on a tool. Um, I liken this to when I was in elementary school and we had to do that kind of that testing that you did to kind of measure yourself against other individuals within your same age group or, or grade. And uh, you, you might recall, like it said, history, and you were at the 88th percentile. So what that means is you're being compared against a normative reference group and where you play into the grand scheme of things relative to that general normative reference group. So this, these cut scores are going to be um, based upon your candidate compared against the normative reference group of our PSI database that we have with a similar job family and group. And over time, we'll continue to watch this very closely. One of the things that we do as a follow-up with PEI is we look at cut scores, we look at pass rates, making sure that we're can we afford to be more selective in the candidates? You know, are we getting way too many people in the in the pipeline and really we need to kind of any and be more selective or or vice versa. We recognize that depending on what's going on in the economy and, and how things are going, you may need to kind of scale back a little bit and say, we're not getting anybody for this role. Why? And and, and that's what our consultants do is we work with PEI, we check in with each other, we make sure everything's looking good long term. So bear with me a second. I'm going to um, pause my screen for a moment and take us out to the um, the website here, and I'll show you kind of how that functionality works. So in just a minute, you'll see the screen change, and on screen will be uh, a page that says account, login, and password. So um, Rick, I, I imagine you're probably on mute. Just want to confirm you can see that okay for me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So for all of you on the call today, part of what you'll do is you, when you roll out the testing at your location is you would um, sit with us and do about a 45-minute training with all those who are authorized users for the assessment. And when we were done with that, you'd each be given your own account, your own login, and your own password. Um, your data would be unique to your specific organization. Uh, it's never cross-checked against any of the other groups. Each of you would kind of live and breathe in your own little world. Um, within our, our system under a PEI kind of holistic account that we have set up today. So what you're seeing, um, what you're going to see on screen today is just a demonstration of kind of the, the quick and dirty training. Obviously, we do a much more rigorous version once you're ready to kind of kick off and start using the tool. Um, and we tend to do that closer to when you're going to start testing your first applicants. Um, it doesn't help us to kind of train you weeks out because oftentimes end users will forget. So we want to make sure that you all are are comfortable with this. So um, give me one second here and I'll go ahead and log into my demo account here. Right, so in just a minute we'll refresh. Now the first time that each of you log into the system, you'll be initial password from our platform and you'll be able to change that to something a little bit easier to remember going forward. Um, it is pretty dynamic as far as what we require for security purposes for passwords and know that if you're not using the system frequently it will um, lock you out after 90 days of, of, um, of not using it. So for those of you that may not be testing that often, I don't think it would hurt to kind of check in every now and then and kind of see how it's going. Um, and so I had a comment made from Ed that um, the audio was kind of cutting in and out. I wonder if, um, Rick, have you noticed the same or has it been okay for you? I, I have noticed it, but just a little bit, just every now and again. Okay. Just a word or two has dropped, but for the most part I'm okay. hearing what you have to say. Okay. I am recording it as well, so we'll see if maybe the recording comes through better and we can always post that elsewhere. That would be fine. Okay. Um, so here you'll see the top we've got from a left side to a right side, we call it the blue bar. Um, and I'm just going to kind of take you through some of the different nuances of each of them. The My Inventory tab is, is basically where you as an authorized user will be able to go in and order the inventory for your account. Um, a question I was getting 
last week was, well, how much is the battery going to cost? And it's uh, $25 per applicant. Um, and so you'll see here, um, for the purposes of the demonstration, I've assumed that I've got three available uh, candidates worth of the, of the service technician battery listed here. But of course, the great thing about the online tool is that you can you can go ahead and order in real time, and um, it'll refresh that same moment. So there's no delay between ordering and being able to have access to your online tool. It's completely web enabled, so there's no downloading of software. There's no um, you know hardware that you have to really have. The basic requirements are a functional computer with solid internet, and um, and usually disabling the pop-up blockers is probably our 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 nemesis the most. But um, when candidates go in to take the assessment, they're actually given a browser check, and we can make sure that the computer is meeting all the requirements before they go in to take the test, which is another great way to kind of check some balances. So what you're seeing me do right now is essentially order new new materials if I needed them. So as, as end users, you would see something very similar, and you'd pick the appropriate inventory item. There's only going to be one listed for you at this time. It's going to say the PEI service technician, so it'll be very easy to, to know what to do. And then think about that quantity in terms of the number of people you, you plan to test. So if you've got five people coming in tomorrow, you put in the five and, 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 and go from there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed through here. And in just a minute, you're going um, to you're going to see you're going to see that it comes up with a total there listed, and uh, the purchase order number would go in there accordingly. Um, this pricing is is not applicable. Um, it's this is just a demo account, but I wanted to mention that you can see that the purchase order number here. We at PSI don't require POs, but we recognize that um, sometimes organizations do require them. So the nice thing about this is you can come in, see what the total is going to be not necessarily place the order right now, but go back to your purchasing department, get the PO for the exact amount, and then if you wanted to, you could then put that in here, and um, it would actually show up on the invoice at the time that it's sent to you, so that um, you, you would have a reference point uh, for your internal accounting needs. So you'll see I just ordered, um, it, you'll see now that it kind of says, um, it'll refresh in just a moment, and it will actually go from the three that we had before up to eight, so again, that real-time kind of capability, which is nice, and um, allows you to to really be able to get the information quickly and get your candidates tested in a timely manner. So the proctoring tab is um, is where most of our end users spend a lot of time. Once they have the inventory in the account, this is where they go in and generate what I call those unique test keys. So a test key is essentially a password that needs to be given to each of your applicants in order to launch the test. And uh, this is kind of the bread and butter of the system in that. Um, this is what, what dictates those test keys being created. So you'll see here there's four buttons at the bottom. Um, we do adhere to um, ADA requirements. So if you're working with an applicant who indicates that they need additional time for various reasons, um, you know, we've had people have ADHD, they have a visual impairment, anything like that, uh, we're happy to work with you in those instances. Uh, we have qualified staff that will be able to review documentation with you if you don't have it, anybody locally at your organizations. Um, but we can extend time on test keys as well. And then, of course, we can always look at giving paper pencil versions in, in, in needs um, where maybe there's a visual impairment that requires a physical hard copy of the assessments. And then, of course, we have on the left-hand side a start session feature. Most of our end users don't use this, but I'll just mention this functionality. If you were sitting at the computer where you wanted the candidate to sit and take the assessment, by clicking on Start Session, it would close it out of your administrative window and go right into your actual um, candidate test page with a test key from these, ver these available eight pre-populated, ready for the can to start using it. So um, the great thing about that is if you're kind of, you only have like a one-off situation occurring, you could log in as the administrator on the computer, click that button, and then bring in candidate John Smith. He would sit down at the, at the very computer where you were seated and then proceed through the assessment. So know that that's an option for you. Alternatively, if you want to be proactive and set things up um, just to kind of be ahead of the game, you can always go in here and generate test keys ahead of time and then print them out or email them. So here you can see it says, how many keys would you like? Bear in mind that each test key, one test key per candidate, is going to take them through each one of those different tools that we just went over together, one right after the next. 
the nice thing about the online tools is it is automated in that it, it times them automatically so that you don't have to, as a proctor or, or a test administrator, you don't need to sit there and have a physical stopwatch. It will automatically move them through, okay, your, your 20 minutes is done on this test, your, 50, your 5 minutes is done on that one, and it puts them one right after the next until they're finished with the assessment. Um, for the purposes of today's demonstration, I'll just put in two here. Maybe I've got two candidates coming in tomorrow. And you'll notice in just a moment that it will um, it will populate into two test keys. The test key format, just so everybody knows, is always two letters followed by six numbers. So if you ever get an individual wondering if it's an O or a zero or an I or a one, know that that's kind of our, our setup feature there. Um, and I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. And again, I don't expect everybody to memorize all this today. I'm just kind of showing you the high level information, recognizing that we'll do more in-depth training when you guys sign up. So from here, you can always email them to maybe a coworker if you need to. Maybe you're authorized to generate the keys, but you've got a recruiter down the hall that's going to be giving them uh, to the candidates, and you don't want them to have access to the system. You can always email them. It kind of creates a generic email to them. Alternatively, you can just save them and keep them on hand so that you have them for reference at a later time. Um, the nice thing about the tool is that while you do order the inventory up front, it never is going to expire or run out in that you would pay for something that you don't get back. Uh, it basically, it's there as long as you want it to be and uh, um, continue testing. So you'll notice now that our count column went from an 8 to a 6. Our unused keys went from a 0 to a 2. So this is just basically saying that I, as Proctor Alicia, have gone in and generated two keys for my candidates coming in, in the next few days. And now I can bring in my candidates and give them each of their respective test keys when they start testing. A um, common question I do get regarding uh, technology, what happens if there's a power surge, they kick the cord, we lose internet connectivity. The nice thing about our system is that with a test key given to the applicant, once he or she is in the tool, once he or she is in the tool, they are able to then go ahead and um, if they lose connectivity, maybe they've completed two or three of the assessments. When they use that same exact test key and go back into the platform, they're then able to then um, continue on to the next test in the sequence and proceed through all of them. And then what it does is it reroutes where they lost connectivity and gives them basically a do-over on that tool itself. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, that's kind of like a general, a general rule of thumb here. Um, I had a question from the field I just wanted to address real quick. So the question is, is there an auto-generated email message with instructions for a candidate that are easily understood to complete the assessment? We don't currently have an auto-generated email template. One of the tools that we recommend that when we send out to you as an end user when we do training is we might recommend some language on uh, how to communicate to the candidate as the, as the assessor um, and also kind of uh, the do's and don'ts of when taking the tool. Those, those are run by PEI and signed off by them, and then that becomes an available uh, tool for you as well. Um, one of the questions I had was, are the keys available to use immediately, or is there a delay after you purchase them? Great question. The, the, the tool is available immediately after you order a few keys, generated a few keys, and in a minute we're going to use one of those keys to show you kind of the candidate experience. So um, it's intended to be real time for you. There's not there shouldn't be any kind of delay from your end. Um, so thank you so much for those questions. And if, you, if there are any more, just keep bringing them in accordingly as we go through the demonstration here. So now I'd like to, um, I'm going to show you the rest of the, what we call the client side of things. But then ultimately, we're going to then use one of the test keys I just generated and uh, launch into the candidate experience as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take us to the candidate tab. This is where your end users um, who have access to the system would be able to go in and pull the results for the candidates. You can search by um, any one of these fields for the individual. If you've got multiple people testing on the same day, you might want to put in the date that they tested so that you can see um, everybody at one time. Um, and then that will populate a report for you. And you're only seeing results uniquely defined by your organization. So if you're affiliated with them somewhere else, it's not going to be across data, um, so you can worry about seeing some results in a different uh, organization or a different location. It's all uniquely defined by the account itself. Obviously, this is a demo account, so we're not seeing live data in there now, but I want to show you the 
the fields that will be available to you. Um, the candidate ID will be displayed as last four to then. The candidate is um, only asked to put a password that has security purposes and not capturing full photos on the system. Um, and then we also have the candidate name. We have their key. Um, the not really to apply the pattern that was being utilized, and then subsequently um, the score band. So you heard us talk about it earlier where we talked about the recommended, recommended, recommended caution. Even at a quick glance, you have to be able to see where it can fall. back to your email personally, it lets you know, oh, I have, um, I've got results now for John Smith, I can go in and pull his results. And it's great if you're testing the candidates even on site because you're, it's letting you know, okay, he's done with his assessment, I've got everything taken care of, I can, I can dismiss him or move him on to the next step in the process. Um, and then also I wanted to mention that when you void a test key or what we call um, delete a test key, maybe a candidate doesn't show up and you don't want it just sitting out there you can also get a notification that that key is no longer valid. Um, if you don't want to receive those, as you can see, it's very easy to go in here and just check a box and, and update your profile, and you won't receive those going forward. Um, I do want to mention that we always encourage you to keep your password secure. You should never be sharing passwords across your departments or with your coworkers. Each person who's authorized should have their own login. If you feel like that's been compromised in any way, you can see that under the change password button. Um, you can go ahead and modify that in real time and it's available to you. So again, just another feature for security purposes we want you to be aware of, um, making sure that the right people have access to the right data. The reports tab is going to look and feel very similar to the candidate tab. The main difference between the two is that when you go to look for an individual under the reports tab and you don't find their name, it's typically indicative of the fact that the individual may not have completed all of the tests in that battery. So maybe they did all the cognitive tests, but they're still in the middle of that workview six that we talked about. If that's the case, then you're not going to see their name show up on the reports tab. However, if you go to the candidate tab, that one shows you people who are started status as well as completed. So you can go ahead and see, oh, I can see he's still in the third test. He's got a little bit more time. That's why I can't pull a score report. So know that you cannot pull responses or results for a candidate until the entire battery combination has been completed by the applicant. If they've only completed three of the six assessments, then you're going to have to wait until they're completely finished in order for you to pull the results for those people. And then um, just something that I, we always like to mention, and this is available anytime, once we've trained you, 
we recognize that some people may not use this on a day-to-day -day basis just based on your hiring needs and the tenure of your, your employees. So we recognize that you might need to go in and refresh on your training or do a train-the-trainer type of approach. These uh, hyperlinks here that you see on the training tab uh, are basically kind of a reiteration of what I'm doing with you today in, in further detail as well as visuals. So your end users can always go back and kind of um, practice or review to make sure they're doing it correctly before they do it in their online account directly. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the logout tab. So again, security is obviously very important. You're protecting not only the integrity of your candidates' results, but also the integrity of the assessment. So we always encourage you to use that logout feature if you're going to step away from your desk. Uh, make sure you don't leave the application open. If you're going to, uh, we always recommend locking your computer if you're, you're going away. Just don't want to give any wandering eyes the opportunity to kind of see that information that shouldn't have access to it. So that's the, um, that's the, what I would call the, the client side of things. Um, as you can see, it's very straightforward, uh, really user friendly. Um, what I'd like to do now with our remaining time is I would like to, like to just take you through kind of a candidate experience. So um, part of what we're going to do in just a moment here is I'm going to take you out to the, uh, the candidate side of things. Uh, one of the documents that you all would receive uh, as part of your training would be the URLs that would be applicable to you. Um, and so one of them would be the testing URL. So when the, the candidates come in to sit down and take the test, this is the test key that they will see, um, or the test page that they'll see. Obviously, that test key is going to be dynamic by candidate. So you can see here, I used that start session feature that I mentioned a minute ago, and it closed out of our administrative window and went right to what we call the candidate website and pre-populated a test key in that field. So with that, the candidate is able to then go ahead and click on continue. And in just a moment, the page will refresh for you, and you'll see that they are then able to see the requirements of what's needed to be able to take the assessment. You can see that we, we use a lot of different browser capabilities, including IE, Firefox, Chrome, Safari. Um, the platforms are, are for operating systems are all up to date. And then we kind of go through what is and isn't enabled. If the person is not passing something, uh, the system will actually tell, do a system check for you and say, hey, you need to go in and disable this or enable that, and it gives even steps on how to do it. Um, if you don't have a tech person on staff that can assist you, we obviously have our technicians here, so part of our training would be to provide you our technical staff's phone number, so you as an administrator can always call in, let them know that your, what your account number is, what the test key is, tell them what it says on screen, and they can actually walk you through, or sometimes they'll even remote into the computer to help troubleshoot for you. Um, that staff is available from 4.30 a.m. Pacific all the way till 5.30 p.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday, and then also on Saturdays from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. So um, the intent being that for those of you that are testing in a proctored environment, you have access to end users uh, to assist you. Really, the only people should, should be calling in there are typically going to be you as administrators, not, not usually the candidates themselves. Every applicant, when they, um, when they come into the system, they are going to be asked to complete what's called a candidate pledge. So here you can see it's a security agreement telling them that they have to test honestly, accurately, and in accordance with the instructions that are listed on screen. If they don't do this, then obviously um, they, if they click disagree, they don't get to proceed into the test itself. Once they do agree to it, it then proceeds into um, some, some demographic information. So, at a minimum, we're asking the candidates to enter in the last four digits of their SSN as a tiebreaker type of a role. Um, and then in addition to that, we ask them for their first name and their last name. We're not currently capturing any other demographic information, such as gender, race, ethnicity, that, those types of things. Um, certainly something that we can do and have the capability of, of customizing um, really just depends on what PEI requires. Um, and if if you as a, a, an organization need us to be capturing something else, we can always work to um, enable something for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Submit. Um, we're not going to go through the actual assessment today. That would just be uh, too time consuming. But my intent was just to kind of show you the can experience up to the first directions. What you're seeing right now are just general instructions. The goal being here that you're helping the applicant familiarize themselves with what to anticipate on the screen, how the mouse is going to work, 
what's allowed and not allowed. Um, certainly they can always skip the instructions if they want to or they continue through them. If they skip the instructions, it will take them to what we call a practice test. Um, the practice test has nothing to do with the actual content of the, of the battery that we just alluded to, but it's more so for them to feel comfortable on how to use the mouse, um, how the screen is going to display for them, where to look for the screen. The goal being that we're trying to alleviate any kind of test anxiety that they might have going into the tool. Um, so what you're seeing on screen right now is a practice test that I was mentioning. Obviously the questions that are listed have nothing to do with what we just talked about, but the goal being that they would feel comfortable clicking around, knowing how to change answers, um, seeing how it, when they hover over it, how it changes the color. Um, obviously if they have multiple pages, how many, how many pages are in the assessment, how many questions are on each page, how many they have answered versus left unanswered, and then of course that time remaining elements, so they can see uh, the timer the entire time. You'll notice nothing's too flashy, or not, a lot of white space. We try not to uh, overwhelm the, the end user, the candidate. We want to make sure that they're able to kind of see the content, see the questions, feel good about it. So as they go through, the, again, just getting comfortable with how to use the traditional mouse. Um, if they want to go back and use the previous button, they can do so. And, um, and then once they're ready, they can say, okay, I want to, I'm ready to click finish. And the way, the way our system works is they, if they finish the test before the timer expires, the nice thing about it is that it says, are you sure you wish to finish? So you should never have a candidate saying, I accidentally finished the exam. I mean, they have to accidentally finish the exam twice if, that, if that's what they claim. Um, so from here you can see, I can say, yes, I, I do really want to finish. Even though I've still got a minute left, I want to go ahead and proceed through. And at this point, it's going to load the first of those multiple assessments that I just talked about a minute ago, and it's going to show the directions for each one of the different assessments one by one. So the first test that the candidate's going to see is that mechanical principles test. It's going to give them the general directions as it relates to this particular test that they're about to go into. They get some practice questions. They get to see, okay, what are you going to be asking me about? You know, what's the context? They even tell them um, what the correct answers are on these practice questions so they can understand how the gears are working or how the levers are working. And then also, importantly enough, it tells them how much time they're given on the assessment. So once they've read all of this, there's no timer running at this point. They're able to read the directions at their own speed. But once they click on begin test, that's when the actual questions are going to commence. And they're going to go through all of the questions accordingly, answer what they know, leave what they don't know blank, and then subsequently, um, go ahead and um, and then uh, proceed through until the, all of those are done. And then, as I mentioned before, it's just kind of rinse and repeat. They're going through each one of those assessments that we've outlined, one right after the next, until they're all complete. So that's kind of the, the candidate experience. Um, I was going to go ahead and I think there's one other question here. What's the estimated or average amount of time it will take each applicant to complete the test? Okay, so um, I would say, we kind of mentioned this on one of the slides earlier. While candidates may take the full time allotted on each of those different assessments, um, you know, this assessment technically they get 20 minutes, then it's another five minute test, uh, and then another 10 minute test, and then two more five minute tests, and then that last one's about 15 minutes. So I would say on average um, for the assessments that you're being given, it's probably going to be between 45 minutes. Um, or so, maybe an hour. The the last assessment, the Workview 6, um, that, while it has 87 questions on it, again, there's no right or wrong answer, so oftentimes people finish that literally in like 15 or 20 minutes. So we give them plenty of time to complete it, mainly because you might have a person who may not read as quickly as another person. They may, um, it may take more time, be more rigorous in, in reading through what the questions are, so we want to account for that but most people will finish probably within that 45 minute uh, time window, I would say, generally speaking. Um, let's see, I'm just kind of going through some more questions here. Are there any questions that cover basic electrical and information technology? Um, so for this assessment, there, um, there are some basic questions around electrical, but it's more just about flow and those types of things. There's not going to be anything about ohms or um, those types of details. We do have assessments that are like that, um, but for the selection piece of this project, we did. those are not part of the tool that's being given as a selective tool. Um, it's certainly something we can work with PEI on down the road as another potential tool that could be added on, um, but in these tests that you're give, being given today, I wouldn't say that they're specific electrical 
questions about um, within the mechanical tool. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the candidate experience. Once the candidate has finished all of the assessments, the system will tell them that they're done. And at that point, they can raise their hand, they can come to you, they can let you know they're finished. And you will have received that email saying, John Smith has just completed the battery. You can go in and pull the results. So you'll know as well that, that, that everything's hunky-dory and you've got everything back from the platform. So bear with me a second. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And we'll go back to the PowerPoint here. So at this point, um, you know, I just really wanted to spend some time with you today talking through um, other questions that you might have. I do want to show you a couple of the, the forms that we have and um, the, where these are going to be listed are going to be, um, you'll, you'll be getting information about how to pull these up. Uh, give me a second and I'll go ahead and pull some of those documents for us to look at. Um, there's two forms that you'd be filling out and uh, one of them is what we call a qualification statement. Uh, this is basic information about your organization, who you are as a leader, uh, the organizational name, your contact information, and then as you can see here, we've, we've already filled out pretty much the majority of the information that um, we would require, so we're trying to simplify this as much as possible for you. Um, once you fill out the remaining information, you would then fax it over to us here. We've got a fax number here. Of course, you can always email it to us as well, um, but then down below, we've we ask you who the other authorized people are that can, are going to be allowed to, to go in and order materials or generate test keys. And then finally, we've got um, just a quick kind of uh, principles of good testing that we ask you to sign off on. And then once we receive this information, as far as setup is concerned, our staff usually finishes setup within one to two business days, um, sometimes even faster, especially when we have a program such as yours kind of rolling out. We can usually do them in bulk and get a done quicker. And then ultimately what we want to do is then work with you as the, uh, as the end user to ter determine when is your staff available for that initial training that we talked about and when are you doing your first hiring. Because we want to make sure we marry the two and get those people trained much sooner rather than later. Um, that's important because we want to make sure that they, they know what they're doing, they're, they're comfortable with it. And then of course our staff is on hand on the day of testing you'll have all of our personal information, our, our emails, our phone numbers, and then we also have group um, emails that we send out to you, so if you can't reach me or Beth, you can always uh, email the group, and one of us is always on hand to assist, and of course, we also have our technical support group, so they can, they can help you as well. So that's one of the documents, and it's my understanding that those are going to be uh, web-enabled for you, and uh, information and posts this training will be sent out to you on where to go in and pull those, um, and then once we receive them, Again, it's very easy for us to set up and get you get you started. So um, just kind of Alicia, an FYI could, there. Mm -hmm. Could I add one quick word? Of uh, course, yeah. Oh, yeah, those forms are actually available right now on our site. And I mentioned that URL for the other uh, service tech tools, but you can download those forms at our site, pei.org slash tech. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And you know, maybe as part of our follow-up. We'll also, we can always upload the uh, PDF document version of the PowerPoint that I did today, and so the staff can have access to that as well. Um, right. just, another, just another way for us to kind of continue the education and get things out there. Um, let's see, there was a question about is problem solving evaluation done? So problem solving, I would say, is, is based under that reasoning skills assessment. So there are uh, a number of cognitive tests that are getting that basic reasoning skills and um, having the person being able to decipher if given the following facts, you know, what should I be doing next? So it's embedded in, in some of those cognitive tools that we talked about earlier and, um, and it is available as a secondary solution. It's not necessarily like we give the problem solving isn't like on the math component. We didn't, we didn't involve the, the numerical reasoning, which is actually like John bought six things and Susie bought seven things, you know. Um, but it, it is still getting at that reasoning capability, which is important for this role specifically. Um, so, Rick, what other questions, concerns, what house would you, um, I can certainly open it up to everybody if you'd like, or um, kind of been going through the questions as they've been coming in. Um, what other items would you like me to cover today for the group? I, I know we, we said an hour and a half, and I, we just wanted to make sure we got enough time for everybody so that they felt comfortable asking questions. and. And getting into right. the system. 
Yeah, I I would encourage anyone else who has a question to type it for uh, Alicia now. This is a great chance for her to respond to anything you have. I don't think if we don't have any any or many more questions, I don't think anyone's going to complain if we take less than an hour and a half for this this time. Sure. But um, but I think you've done a great job. I would let me mention just a couple of points because there were two questions about the nature of the content of the test. The question about electrical and the question about um, the uh, problem solving, math problem solving. Um, this is a test that can be refined as time goes on. We'll be continuously interacting with our friends at PSI and ev evaluating how the tests are going. If there's anything we're missing, we're missing. But I will say that a good uh, bit of work, and, and Alicia alluded to this originally, went into the front end of this and determining what questions were asked. We had and forgive me for forgetting the number, but I think it was something like 50 or 60 members who participated in some of the early processes of de designing the test. And they went through exercises like, you know, tell us about the skills that are essential. Um, is this skill, might it be 5% of the job or 50% of the job? And so the questions initially this first round were designed based on that feedback. Not to say everything is perfect, and if we get into it and, and our members say we think we need some more questions in this area or that, we can do that. But we feel pretty good about the overall structure based on the initial feedback that we got for now, at least. Excellent. I got some questions about costs, and so I just want to make sure I address those. So one of the questions was, what's the cost for this? And the other one was, is there a cost to get set up in the system? So um, both good questions. So the cost per applicant is $25. That's assessed at the time that you generate, or what we call order. As far as a cost of getting set up in the system, there's no other additional fee for setting up this in our platform. So there's no uh, set up fee or anything like that. That's all been waived through our agreement with PEI. So all that you as an end user are going to be paying for are the ordering of your test keys. Again, that's $25 per applicant when you order the inventory. So you do pay for the inventory up front, regardless of when you use those test keys. They're always available to you. So if it's better for you to order in bulk, maybe you want to order 15 or so a week or something, so you have them just kind of in waiting, you can do it that way. Alternatively, we do have some clients who order as needed, kind of one-off, and that's fine too. Just know that for each order that you place in the platform, you're going to get an individual invoice. So think about your accounting people. Think about their, the number of invoices they get. See if there's something that you can do to kind of work out and figure out, well, we've got X number of people coming in the next few weeks. Why don't we order in bulk and kind of give them one invoice as opposed to multiple? Good question. That actually, yeah, uh -huh. that actually was a very good question because we did not want to d design it the structure of the program in a way that you would have to buy a bunch of tests and just hope you could use them. But Alicia's point is well taken. For some of you, it might be easier to order several tests and pay one invoice rather than 10, you know, 10 $25 invoices or whatever the number might be, but totally up to you. Right. Um, I don't have any other questions currently. Uh, how Anybody else that's out in the field, if you want to write anything, um, I encourage you to do so. We'll give it just a second here. I've got a couple more coming in. Okay, one of the questions was, is there a connection between PSI Petroleum Services LLC and PSI Petroleum <laughs> Solutions? <laughs> that, that, PSI is, that, is a great, <laughs> that is a great question. And Alicia, you may not even be aware of this, but we do have a member that has that the same initials that you do. Uh, there is no connection whatsoever uh, uh, with the PEI member. PSI uh, Solutions just happens to have that name. Good question. Right. Similar, similar acronyms. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Not sure. Not sure if I missed this, but are there email addresses for Alicia and others? Great question. You didn't miss it. Uh, one of the things that we'll be following up on here will be our, our contact information. Likely, I think that's probably going to come through Rick and his team. Uh, we have all those who attended today, so we'll be pulling the attendee list and each of your emails accordingly, and then sending out not only. Um, 
our contact information, but also probably putting together, I, I kind of mentioned this before, like an FAQ, where to go. Rick mentioned some great websites. Kind of putting that into a summary document and then getting it out to the team, especially those of you who have joined today, and then those that are going to join next week when we have that second session. Um, so you, everybody should be receiving that here in, in the very near future. Right, and as far as from PEI's standpoint, the primary point of contact here will be Bob Young. Many of you know Bob, but Bob's email address is bjoung at pei.org, um, and we can also we will get you his, his phone number as well. Bob's out of the office today, but we'll be back in next week and available at any time you have questions for us. And then for my team, um, we have everybody's information, and we'll we'll probably disseminate that through the same channel. So all those names I alluded to earlier, between Beth, me, Jen, Jay, and then we have this group one that's kind of all inclusive. So you want to hit all of us at one time, you just email one email address. So all of that will be sent out to you as a as a post to this meeting today. Right, we will get that out. Um, let's see. I guess one more question here. Are there other tests that PSI um, oh that, that um, PSI offers that are applicable to sales and related positions? Yes. I mean we we at PSI we test across every single job family from entry level all the way up to executive suite. So um, I didn't go into it today just for the purposes and context of this call, but Yes, absolutely. We we have a variety of different tools that we offer, leadership services included, and then also those sales elements. So if anybody's interested, always something that we can talk about. <laughs> okay. Well, we still got a few more minutes here. Um, we'll just give a, a couple more minutes if anybody else wants to chime in here. Don't be shy. We appreciate you guys asking the questions. I'm sure other people have similar ones that don't. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So nothing new yet, Rick. So I don't know if you want to go okay. ahead and sign off. Yeah, the group. I, th I think that's good. I think we've given people the opportunity, and certainly this isn't your last opportunity to have to ask a question. We'll be getting the contact info out and go in from there and certainly will be available. So so we'll go ahead and close for now. Um, thank you all so much for participating. We had a great group on the line here just looking at the number of companies that participated in the call and we look forward to um, working with PSI as we continue down this road and I know all of you will as well. So thank you so much for your